Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My apologies for the uh, delay. We were meeting in closed session. Consider a couple of items. So I will ask for a motion from the clerk to uh, rise uh, with reporting. So it's moved by Councillor George, seconded by Councillor Allen. The council rise from Committee of the Whole closed meeting that the rules of 20, file of 2010-1 be waived and the chair report. So please vote. And that carries. Let's move by Councillor George, second by Councillor Allen, that Council ratify the collective agreement between the Corporation of the City of Kingston and IBEW, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 636, for the period of January 1st, 2015, through to December 31st, 2017. Please vote. And that carries. Are there any disclosures of potential pecuniary interest? Councillor Shell. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. I, Liz Shell, of uh, Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston. To my conflict of interest in the matter of nominations committee clause 5 part C the Arts Advisory Committee as my spouse is one of the nominees thank you thank you are there any other disclosures of potential pecuniary interest okay seeing none I'll ask for a motion oh, Councillor McLaren I also declare my pecuniary interest in the same one as my brother is on uh, that list. <laughs> okay, Can, maybe if you could put that in writing for us, just to make sure that we get exactly the right, uh, exactly the right clause. So we'll, we'll give you a chance to do that. If you can just give that to the clerk, um, that would be great. Um, seeing no other disclosures of potential pecuniary interest, oh, hold on. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just throw it a subtle hint that if you have a potential pecuniary interest in relation to the budget, this might be a good time to put that forward. <laughs> not that, not that it's my role to tell you if you have a potential pecuniary interest or not, but I know that there are a couple. Uh, Councillor Bowman. Thank you, Your Worship. As uh, previously declared and noted in the budget documents, I have pecuniary interests in such as usually will not be voting on them as they are noted and they've already been submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, Mary Rita Holland of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my pecuniary interest in the matter of report number 17, um, as I am an, a beneficiary of funds from cultural services. Thank you. So I believe that they are noted from our budget meetings from the other week. Um, so seeing no other declarations, um, I'll ask for a motion to approve the adeds. Uh, I just see that we have three delegations listed, uh, a motion of condolence and some uh, items of communication. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Sanic, seconded by Councillor Bohm. Please vote. So one person to vote, and that carries. We have no presentations tonight, so we will move right to our delegations. Our first delegation this evening is Mr. Joe Hawkins, who will appear before council to speak to new motion one with respect to the Limestone District School Board continuing to seek a suitable solution from their secondary school park process. Mr. Hawkins, as with all delegations, you have five minutes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and members of council, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening to present. Mr. Mayor, members of council, and Kojiko audience. Good evening. 
<clears throat> Mayor Patterson, members of City Council, the Ministry of Education has allocated $36 million to construct a new high school in the city of Kingston to replace KCVI, QECVI high schools. This is the best opportunity that the Limestone School Board and the city of Kingston will ever have to encourage a more positive environment, culturally, socially, and economically for the students of our community. Now is the time for Kingston City Council and the Limestone District School Board to become engaged in building partnerships. Innovative thinking, seizing opportunities. This is a unique opportunity. This opportunity will not exist henceforth. The Limestone District School Board sent a letter to City Council last week to open discussions about partnerships. Innovative thinking and collaboration between the both organizations. This week, City Council, <clears throat> at their meeting on the 27th of January, voted to ask the province to open discussions regarding electoral form, reform, sorry, <clears throat> including consideration for 16-year-old old to vote. Council demonstrated their openness to explore new directions and creative solutions. Creative innovation collaboration begins here tonight. With a positive message to the Limestone School Board that says from the city of Kingston, enthusiastically to build a secondary school of creative innovation and success for the students of Kingston. Please vote against the new motion number one, which puts conditions of discussion at peril with the Limestone School Board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions for the delegation? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Our second delegation this evening is Ms. Elizabeth Bates, who will appear before council also to speak to new motion number one with respect to the Limestone District School Board continuing to seek a suitable solution from their secondary school park process. Ms. Bates. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Patterson, City Councillors, thank you for the opportunity to speak about this issue, which will have such significant and lasting impact on our city for decades to come. I'd like to comment first on the suggestion that a site recognizing the service and sacrifice of our veterans can include a great range of community facilities and activities, but not high school students. We have Schools in Ontario dedicated to the memory of veterans with plaques and lists of names of our veterans which reminds students of those sacrifices. Memorial Public School in Hamilton, for example. KCVI and QECVI both have plaques honoring veterans in their hallways. Remembrance Day services take place in every school every year and students from the age of four are involved. Veterans and students are invited, veterans and soldiers, and with the military presence in our city, our students are particularly aware of the ongoing reality of conflicts. Developing citizenship is a fundamental part of every school's mandate, and honoring the past is part of that. When did we ever begin to think so poorly of our young people to suggest they're not fit to be on land dedicated to the memory of our veterans? Many of the names on the Memorial Center's War Memorial are young men who were the same age as our high school students when they went to war. Was education not an important part of the freedom those soldiers fought for? What better way to honor their memory than with a school educating and preparing young people as citizens and for those students to walk past those names on their way into school? Maybe we could drop in on their annual Remembrance Day service. The Memorial Center as a site for the new high school seems ideal to me. 
I've looked at it a lot, and I've thought a lot about whether it could work. It's exactly halfway between KC and QE, and it's the only location that would not leave our city core with no high school. No matter where it ends up, the location of this school will be, will be important to the health and vibrancy of our downtown going forward, and will strengthen the neighborhoods around it for decades to come. This decision is not to be taken lightly. We really need to get this right. But the Memorial Center site has never been looked at to find out if it would work. I've heard a range of concerns. Parking. KCVI has about 90 parking spaces. The Memorial Center has 186. I drive by frequently. I've never seen more than a handful of cars parked by the Memorial Center during school hours. The school would have all it needs during the day, September to June. No green space would be taken away for parking for the new high school. That's how it looks to me. I could be wrong. Without studying it, we can't know for sure. Buses. York Street in front of the Memorial Center is a very wide street. KCVI has less than 30 buses. Buses could easily come down from Concession and up from Princess Street, circle the property to drop off or pick up students. I lived one block from KCVI for 20 years. Buses weren't a problem there, and they wouldn't be a problem at the Memorial Center. That's how it looks to me. I could be wrong, but we don't know for sure. Green space. The footprint of the agricultural barns is about the same size as KCVI, which sits on a 2.7-acre property. A new school could sit in the southwest corner of the Memorial Center property without taking away any green space. That's how it looks to me. Could be wrong. We won't know if we don't look at it. Effects on the site and the community. The recent renovations to the Memorial Center property would not be affected by a high school placed in the southwest corner. In fact, the opportunity would be there for a partnership between the city and the school board, which would see a significant investment from the board in creating and maintaining a football soccer field inside the racetrack. 30 seconds. Maybe with 30 seconds? 30 seconds. Can I have any of Joe's time? Uh, maybe with a running track around it for track and fields event, maybe an astroturf, an additional improvement to the green space available for community use. My point is that because we've never looked at the facts, no one knows if this could work. If it ultimately won't, Council has the power to vote against it in the future. This is an opportunity to establish a positive relationship with the Council and the new board. And this is an important decision. Too, too important to be rushed. So please take the time for broad and open discussions on all the possible sites, including the Memorial Center. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll leave this for you to read. Thank, thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Are there any questions for the delegation? Uh, Councilor George. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Could you go back to the slide where you show uh, the proposed location for the school? Right there. Where would you suggest the Agricultural Society move? This is why I think we need to look into it. My understanding is there are sites look, being looked at for that. If that can't be solved, that would be the deal breaker. But if it can be solved, then I, th I think this is the ideal spot for a school. And you I, do? Okay. Fine. I just can't see closing the door on something that's going to be the only downtown location for the rest of our lifetimes uh, without looking at whether some kind of solution can be found for that. It's just, it is, it is one issue, and it, it could well be the, the deal breaker if it can't be done. That's fine, but I think if we, um, if we reject this as a possibility without looking into those things, then we haven't done due diligence. And the other question I have for you is, do you, you do realize that the Agricultural Society has a long-standing agreement with the city that was registered back in the 50s? I realize that, that they've been there a long time. I also know they use the facility four days a year. Um, I know there are possible other places that could be looked at. So what I'm saying is, it's one problem. We don't know if there's a solution. 
and we haven't exercised due diligence if we don't try to find that out. Well, my question was, so, were so, you aware that there's... I, oh, agreement? I was aware of how long the history is, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Is there anybody else that has any questions for the delegation? Councillor Turner. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Through you, I have a question. Concerning the size of this potential school, um, could you tell me in relationship to other schools around the city, the number of students that would be going to the school versus other schools in size? Yeah, roughly the same number of, of um, high school students as KCVI would hold, uh, similar to QE, smaller than LCVI. Um, so I believe it's 1,140 students plus Vanier, which is the grade 7, 8. So a little bit bigger than KC and a little bit smaller than LC. Yeah, and the space that it takes depends on whether you... If you have 10 acres in the country, you can spread it out and it's all one level. But as KCBI, if you have a smaller piece of land you want to put it on, you build it three floors like KCBI is. So definitely, you know, not a, it's a mid-sized school is what this would be defined as. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Seeing no other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our third delegation this evening is uh, Tomiko Ferguson, Everald Waltz, and Madison Kehoe Cohen from QECVI, who will be appear before council to speak to new motion number one. So welcome, and just a note that you have five minutes to share be between you. Good evening, I'm Marnie McCormack, and this is Polly Van Hip. We are the Rural and Urban Student Trustees of the Limestone District School Board. Thank you, Mayor Patterson and members of City Council for allowing us to speak tonight. As student trustees, we are the voice of students at the board table. Tonight, we ask that you remain open regarding potential sites for the new school, and that all ideas should be thoroughly analyzed and deeply discussed. The unification of Central Kingston schools will serve to enrich and diversify education. The excitement of a new school and innovative classrooms is undeniable. This only emphasizes the importance of decisions made regarding a school site. A pressing issue is the lack of public recognition of the importance of decisions made outside of the boardroom. All opportunities must be explored to ensure the best outcome for students of Central Kingston. It's important to acknowledge the influence City Council has on students, and we feel it's prudent to consider and consult students in this process. We are taught the importance of critical thinking and discussion. We encourage City Council to look at all potential sites re before reaching a decision, not only in conversation with our board, but as well in dialogue with those directly impacted. Students, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Everett Watts. I'm a grade 11 student at QECVI. And I'm Madison Kehoe Cowan. I'm a grade 12 student at QECVI. And we've been just chosen to say some words on the students' behalf. So. Young people are the future of this city and deserve the best education opportunities possible. Students aren't getting the proper programming they deserve and we can't go on like this much longer. We are in desperate need of a new school, a new accommodating school. Not everyone has the same goals in life, so we need to have a school where everyone can find their place. We have to make sure the new school is accessible to everyone and meet everyone's needs. Many families in our neighborhood face challenges every day and we can't leave them behind. The best way to bring our school together is to meet on a neutral ground and start something new together. We believe our best chance for us as students to be successful is a new school in a city property such as the Memorial Center or a Cook's location. Our teachers try to give us the skills to work together and problem solve, and we hope that's what you'll be able to do. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, members of council. I am a grade 12 student at KCBI, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak on motion one. I'd like to first state off that uh, do not mistake this public debate or solicited studies as a test for your accountability. If you believe and care about the city, its guiding principles, and your citizens, then discussion must be permitted between the city and the school board without preconceptions and without restrictions. I'm hopeful that tonight, Council can help me understand why a member of Council 
would want to support a motion that is in contradictory to the vision and values of the City of Kingston. For me, this motion is not about the Memorial Centre or the schools. This motion is about the vision and values so prized by all who represent the City of Kingston. Kingstonians should be proud by the guiding principles held in your mission statement. The first, vision. We are progressive and innovative. Second, teamwork. We are equally responsible to work together to achieve our common goals. The third, respect. We treat others the way we wish to be treated. And the fourth being pride. Our sense of accomplishment is achieved through our contributions to the community. We are recognized for the quality of our work. In reading motion one, I'm taken aback by the clear lack of commitment to your mission statement your guiding principles, your visions, and your values. This motion should be founded on the belief that the historical municipal site, recognizing the service and sacrifice of our veterans, should be honored by our youth. So please help me understand why our youth should not be allowed to honor our veterans. And the second being that the, Led the Limestone District School Board can be a contributing partner to the low ratio of parkland per capita in the Williamsville and Kings Court Strathcona District. If the lack of parkland is such a concern. Why can't the school board be a part of its solution? Thank you very much. Thank you. Just before you head back to your seats, is there, are there any questions from council? Councilor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship, and my thanks to the delegation for doing such an incredible job representing your peers and, and being here tonight to share some of your ideas for the future. Um, I do have a question uh, specifically for Madison. Uh, I just would like to know a little bit about some of the programming issues um, encountered by students at QECVI. For example, I know that you've got some experience with that. Thank yeah. you. Um, there's a lot of problems with the program because we don't have the numbers. So certain programs only run certain years or certain semesters. And I didn't start at QECVI, I started at Regiopolis. And unfortunately, I switched right when I was missing the course outline that I needed. So I got kind of screwed over, <laughs> to say the least. And it's very frustrating seeing students struggle every day, stressing out about college because they can't get the courses they need on time. I have to return for a whole year because each course that I need runs in separate semesters. Because they can't run it two semesters and there's just some, like they don't know if they're going to run it because there might not be enough people wanting to go into it. So it's just very stressful. And it's not needed when there's an opportunity like this to make everything so much easier. Thank you so much. Okay, seeing no other questions, thank you very much. Are there any other delegations to add this evening? Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to move a motion to waive bylaw 2010 dash one clause 11.4.5 to add a delegation of Scott White to speak to the new motion number three with respect to Don House. So there is a motion presented by Councillor McLaren. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Holland. So we'll call the vote. Remember that this requires two thirds to pass. And that carries. Are there any other delegations to add? Councillor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. I move that clause 11.5 of the City of Kingston procedural bylaw be amended to, sorry, be, as amended, be waived in order to allow a delegation from David Jackson, Limestone District School Board, to speak to new motion one, which reaffirms the City of Kingston's clear commitment to not consider the use of the Memorial Center site for any new school construction, and that the City of Kingston work collaboratively with the Limestone District School Board to work towards a resolution of their secondary school park process. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Neal. Call the vote. And that carries. If there are no other delegations to add, then we will move to the first added delegation. So Mr. White uh, will speak uh, to new motion number three regarding Don House. Mr. White, you can just come. Okay. Hi, then. 
Thank you very much, Your Worship, Councillors. Uh, I am the uh, chair of the board for Don House, and I just wanted to say thank you very much for your budget uh, allowing us to continue until the end of the year. And uh, I just wanted to uh, affirm to everybody and confirm that we will, within a two-week period, have our, our financial uh, budgets to you, as well as our operational plan, and let you know how we will be going continuing forward. And that women's shelter in this town, uh, we don't have, well, we have them, but they're not funded. And they're not funded well enough for us to continue. And our, our, you know, I know the new housing plan is, is, is in place, and we're really excited about that, and we really want to work with everybody. And I just want to say thank you again, and that we will have all of our uh, financial statements to you. And we are a thriving, continuing business. Our um, uh, occupancy rates are higher than you would want. Uh, you know, we would love to work ourselves out of business, but unfortunately we can't. But we do appreciate us continuing until the end of the year, and, and then hopefully move forward, we can continue uh, for, uh, for a long period of time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Councilor McClary. May I ask about how many people do you turn away a month due to being at full capacity? Well, um, as it turns out, uh, we were looking at the numbers today, and, and it's significant. There, there are times when we're looking at, you know, 30, 40 women a month that we have to turn away because we don't have the space. Um, you know, all the other houses don't have the space. Uh, we get the harder, the harder luck cases that other houses won't take. Uh, and our, our, the, the numbers of people that we keep the longer term, we keep them longer than anybody else's house. So it's, it's significant. Okay, so you no other questions? Oh, Councillor Allen. Sorry, I just wanted to follow up on uh, yes. your last statement there. Yes. You, you keep uh, your residents, your, the people you're sheltering longer than anyone else. Do you mind just speaking to uh, why you have adopted that policy um, against, against the grain, I guess? Well, the reason being is because a lot of the, the women that we take are harder to house. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, mental issues. There are drug issues. Uh, there's, they're just harder to house. And we end up, for, what, for lack of a better reason why, we're the sort of the, the house of last choice that we, we usually don't turn people away. And the ones that we do get, we keep them longer because they're really hard to rehouse. Thank you. Thank you. See no other questions. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillors. Okay, and our final delegation this evening is uh, Mr. Jackson, who will speak to Council regarding new motion one. Mayor Patterson and members of council, thank you so much for allowing us to present to you this evening. I'm David Jackson, chair of the Limestone District School Board, and joining me tonight are Vice Chair Paula Murray and Trustee Alec Ross, as well as Trustee Garrett, Student Trustees Van Herp and McCormick, and as well as our Director of Education and Superintendent of Business. Clearly, the presence of a number of delegations this evening on the topic of a new central and intermediate and secondary school speaks to the importance of this issue that brings us here, all here. How to best support the achievement and well-being of students in central Kingston, now and in the future. We believe that this can be best achieved by the board and the city working together to find an optimal location for our new intermediate and secondary school that will bring together students from both Kingston Collegiate and Queen Elizabeth Collegiates. As you know, last week, the board sent council a letter inviting further discussions around expanding potential partnership opportunities between our organizations, and specifically about a location for our new school, the first public secondary school to be built in the city of Kingston for four decades. Tonight, we urge council to support the wording and spirit of the final part of Councillor George's motion later in the agenda that proposes the city work collaboratively with the board towards a resolution for the secondary school. We most respectfully request that Council defer the first part of the motion that removes the Memorial Center site from consideration. We appeal to Council not to limit the scope of possible site explorations, including the Memorial Center site, until a thorough and thoughtful sharing of information, perspectives, and options around all potential city and board-owned sites can be completed. 
There is nothing to be lost by waiting until further discussions and explorations can take place, but the possibility for enormous gains for all of our students and the city. With $36 million in funding, we are ready to construct a physically accessible, sustainable, and contemporary environment with innovative programs and modern spaces and technology to support the success of every student that our school will serve. What we still seek is a city location that will provide fair and equitable access for as many students as possible. And I believe we have uh, just a little Venn diagram which basically shows the catchment areas of the three schools in question that uh, were part of the accommodation review uh, conducted several years ago by the Limestone District School Board. So this includes uh, LCVI, QECVI, and KECVI. And you can see in the middle, um, we're trying to find an equal distance location which um, would serve all of those three constituencies. The map on your screen and in your packages shows where students now living in relation to a variety of potential sites of suitable size owned by the board and the city. You can see that two city-owned sites, Cadings and Memorial Centre Properties, provide the most equidistant and accessible sites. The accompanying fact sheet that you have in your package shows the distances to the potential sites from current schools. In addition, we provided you with some very early concept designs for both the Memorial Centre here, and you can see uh, a refinement of where, uh, in concept basis, where our school could be built in the southwest corner of the Memorial Centre, and equally, um, over on Cadings Pasture, which if you're familiar with it, is off between uh, Rideau and Montreal Street, where a school could also be located in um, what are now the uh, original Cadings fields. We want to share you these preliminary concept drawings as possible school footprints on, the, on these two city-owned sites to help you begin to envision the possibilities for the present and future of our city. Both these early concept drawings were created at the request of our Board of Trustees to help us in our own visioning. As you can see, both city-owned sites have enough space to accommodate a new school, parking, and recreational areas. I want to assure council members that no further design planning has occurred. We understand that before anything further is even contemplated, much work must be done to better assess any environmental concerns of either potential site and to consider solutions regarding the potential relocation of the Memorial Centre, Agricultural Fair, and the Barns. We ask tonight that you work with us to explore these possibilities before shutting the door to what may be viable and dynamic opportunities for our youth and the community of Kingston. Please join us in considering shared community access to facilities such as specialized sports fields, gymnasia, a library, arts and theater spaces and meeting rooms, all seconds. potentially in one accessible location. The board recognizes the considerable community value of the millions of dollars invested in the Memorial Center site, including the Memorial Wall, the Garden, Linear Park, and Aquatic, Aquatic Center. A new school on part of that site would allow the possibility of further enhancing and expanding the social and cultural opportunities of the site and deepening the understanding of the respect of our youth for the important contribution of our veterans to Canadian democracy. Both the board and the city have many successful collaborations, our partnership on the Carousel Field at the Invista Centre, for example, and more recently our, our shared agreement on the Rideau site's right of violation. As we start 2015, we are a new school board and you are a new city council. Both our organizations have many new elected members. We are hopeful that this overture to partnership will mark the beginning of an open, respectful, and mutually beneficial thank, relationship. Th Two thank groups you. of leaders cooperatively seeking our communities together. Thank you thank very you. much. Are there any questions for the delegation? Councillor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, could you explain, or I guess give a little bit of an outline, Mr. Jackson, um, a, regarding the time frame for providing more information on these potential sites with the information you currently have? Uh, thank you, that's an excellent question. At this point, we, we've provided concept drawings, but that's really all they are. We really need to find out whether it's technically feasible uh, to, to develop either of these sites, and we don't know that information at this point. So the first um, aspect of a technical investigation will be environmental assessments on both sites, uh, phase one and a phase two. Thank you. And when you, sorry, just one last thing. If, when you refer to uh, some of the technical issues, does that include the, the um, questions that have been raised already and that you've alluded to regarding the Barnes, uh, the memorial component and the, uh, what currently exists on the site and how we might fit a school in and around that? Yes, we recognize that the, the memorial center site is a more complicated issue. Um, 
There is a long-standing relationship, as members of council know, with the Agricultural Society, and that's one of the issues that would have to be dealt with. Um, we also recognize that we need to do, probably do some extensive uh, parking studies and other related studies to ensure that uh, there isn't, uh, or we minimize the impact in that area. And there are the regular technical analysis that we would do on any site, basically, uh, or any developer would do in the city. Uh, Councillor Stroud. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chair Jackson, uh, could you just give uh, uh, Council here maybe the top three differences between the two uh, sites that you've identified here with the concept drawings, the Cooks and the Memorial Centre? The top three differences between the two sites. In the drawings or between the two no, sites? No, just in general for usage. Um, you, the difference in the of. sites. Well, I, I think it's, let me just go back to, um, assuming we can go back here. Maybe I can't. Nope, I can't. So this is the Memorial Centre site, and you can see that the school is located on the southwest corner, um, which is where the Agricultural Society barns have been located for a number of years. And so it's a tighter site, clearly, and it's more of a design challenge. It's, it's got less uh, property involved with it. Oops, we're... Sorry, we've managed to move. There. Um, it's a tighter site. There's no two ways about it. So there's, it's a little more complicated, but it's not impossible. In terms of urban schools, there are lots of examples across Canada and North America on much tighter sites. And in fact, if you look at KCVI, it's on as restrictive a site as that. In terms of uh, Katings, which hopefully I can get to. There. Um, this is a more expansive site. and. Um, you notice that um, the uh, includes a lot more recreational areas. So the McGaffin Stadium is to the uh, west there. That uh, where we've located the school. And this concept drawing is on the north end of that site. So there's some opportunities. It's a much more spacious site. It's got some opportunities for locating either the school, either at the location we've shown here, or possibly, although we haven't investigated that farther at this point, is possibly putting it at the south end, which is closer to the housing. So that's one of the areas that we'd have to explore. Um, on the uh, west side of Bagot, that's Bagot running north and south there, you have the opportunity to do something with the old Cooks Brothers Arena, but again, that's something that we need uh, further exploration. And again, we're mindful that this site as well would need an environmental assessment. The, uh, of course, the famous tannery site is just to the uh, east there, and so we're, we're certainly aware that there may be some contamination issues, and that probably will be um, certainly on this site and also the other site may be a, a significant factor and, and cost issue. But at this point, we're really asking for, could we please just explore and see if it's possible. So you identified, uh, there's basically there are three things. It was location, uh, uh, the, we saw on the first slide the difference in location, roughly the same uh, distance from the Q KCVI and QECVI. From, from those two sites, but uh, with Memorial Center more centrally located in the city. Uh, that's one. The second one was there's more space on the Katings or Cooks Brothers site. Uh, it would be a tighter fit on the Memorial Center site. And the third one being the environmental uh, assessment, which is a com unknown at this time. Is that correct? Exactly. So, I mean, there are issues, again, an investigation will start to detail that a little bit further. Uh, in collaboration with the consultants, which clearly we'd be paying for, but also in collaboration with the city. So there are a number of other issues, I'm sure, uh, on both sites that we need to explore. But uh, I think primarily at this point, we're looking at environmental assessments, quite frankly, because we need to know whether it's uh, feasible without a huge amount of remediation to actually work on those sites. Now, there are other issues, of course, but those are, that's a pretty uh, key one. Councillor Allen. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, uh, I'd just like to thank uh, you for you and your fellow trustees for coming here in the spirit of collaboration. I think we're feeling pretty good about that at the council um, and looking forward to working with you over the next four years. So thank you for um, uh, coming here in that spirit and, and sharing with us some of these concepts and being very open. Question. I see thank you. You eyeing me. Thank uh, you. The, uh, so the question I have is, uh, it, uh, you, you've shown us uh, two sites uh, on uh, municipal property. I, I was wondering if you had anticipated or have other sites in the city uh, that are, are not on municipal property that you're considering as well. Uh, yes, we have. We've looked at a number of sites uh, across the city. The challenge that we have is that 
uh, if you're building a new school, uh, we want it in an equidistant location. And so that's why we're here, frankly, is the best locations are sites that you own, not us. Uh, we do have other sites, but they tend to be at the perimeter of that. If I can get back to that, maybe I can't. There we are. They're at the edge of, uh, the, of those Venn diagrams, basically. So it, it starts to make uh, problems with walking distance um, and possibly uh, issues of people not wanting to come to the school because it's too far from where they live. So th this is the challenge of building a school in a built-up area where there aren't that many sites, frankly. Great, thank you. Councillor Turner. Through you, uh, Mayor Patterson. Um, thank you for coming this evening and thank you for sharing all your information. I have a quick question about um, if you were to look at the Memorial Center site, um, would the school possibly be agreeable to looking at other sites to share with the agricultural people? Maybe you could offer a school site in exchange for the Memorial site? moving forward into the future with them? Uh, the, the quick answer is yes, we do have other property in the city. Mm -hmm. And clearly that's one of the things we'd like to investigate with city staff is what would be possible. We have uh, two sites that are clearly becoming vacant and a third one which uh, has some opportunities on it as well. So um, we think that there are um, sites that we can, not only for the agricultural society, but for other recreational uses. We're aware, for example, on the one site we may just be displacing soccer fields. So we think that we could come up with some um, arrangement that would be um, suitable that would not uh, displace those recreational uses. And we do have a track record in this area. Our uh, uh, carousel development, which we contributed to a number of years with a new track is built, uh, is I think the evidence of us uh, contributing uh, not only financially, but to resources in terms of uh, time and energy. In fact, uh, uh, one of our uh, new trustees, uh, Wes Garrett, who's with us tonight, was very instrumental in uh, spearheading over a number of years that development. We went across the city, and, and uh, I think it's fair to say that Wes left no stone unturned in trying to get that property developed. So I think we do have a track record of, of working well with the city on these things. Okay, because I think it's a major concern is taking down those barns if, if the school was to move there. And I think the people at the market square and the marketplace there would be very upset. So we'd have to accommodate them if we were going to move forward in that issue. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just a reminder, just questions only at this point. Thank you. Is there anybody else that has a question? It's okay. Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So um, we have no more delegations, so we will move uh, to motions of congratulations, recognition, sympathy, condolences, and speedy recovery. We have one motion of condolence, moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Deputy Mayor Neal, that the condolences of Kingston City Council be extended to the people of Peshawar, Pakistan, following the tragic events of December 16, 2014, that claim the innocent lives of over 100 people, many of them children. We send our sympathies with the Pakistan-Canada Association of Kingston, who have organized a delegation of community members traveling to Peshawar this month. So we will call the question. Please vote. And that carries. We have no deferred motions. So I'll ask for report 15 from the Chief Administrative Officer. It's moved by Councillor Turner, second by Councillor Allen, that report number 15 from the Chief Administrative Officer consent be received and adopted. There are three clauses. Would anyone like to have any of them separated? Okay, seeing none, we will vote on them as a whole. Item A is Ministry of Transportation noise exemption request. Highway 401 at the Westbrook underpass. Item B is a word of contract for the provision of homemaking services in the city of Kingston. And item C is renaming of Clark Road to Clark Road. Makes sense to me. So we'll call the vote. And that carries. Next, I'll ask for Report 16 from the Nominations Advisory Committee. 
Thank you, Your Worship. It's my pleasure to present uh, report number 16 from the Nominations Advisory Committee and ask that it be received and adopted. And I'm not sure if His Worship would be entitled or interested in taking the report as presented or if you wish to read all 10 pages of names that are attached to it. <laughs> Thank you. So it's moved by Councillor George, second by Councillor Allen. Report number 16 from the Nominations Advisory Committee be received and adopted. So um, there are a lot of names here, but I do think that there is a principle of, of reading them out publicly, just as a credit to those that have been nominated to the uh, various committees that we have in the city. This is the longest the list will ever be in four years. So if you'll bear with me, I will try to read through them quickly. So I'm just looking, there are two clauses here, so we'll just vote on them together. So first we have, oh, we can't do that. My, my apologies. So we will separate them because of the conflict that um, Councilor McLaren has. So the first clause is recommendation regarding public appointments to Kingston Environmental Advisory Forum. Uh, so the appointees are Tom Carpenter, Robert Foster, Allison Goebel, Matthew Venter, Roger Healy, Anastasia Lindner, Jane McDonald, Fraser McLaren, Mark Potben, and Simon Smith. And that the following appointments be made for a one-year term, David Carnegie and Darko Matovich. We will call the question. And that carries. Item two is recommendation regarding public appointments to other boards and committees that the following board and committee appointments be made. Appeals Committee uh, for a one-year term, Nikki Dyack, Ann Helsby Scooton, and Hank Wavers. To the Arts Advisory Committee for staggered terms of two and four years, Kathy Hamilton, Lynn Kenny. To the Bell Park Working Group for a one-year term, Mary Louise Adams, Serena Manson, John McLean, Jacques Menard, Dale Peterson, and Dr. Ken Reimer. The Housing and Homelessness Advisory Committee for a two-year term, Terry Fleming and Ali Ryder. The Kingston Election Compliance Audit Committee, Andrew Cole. Kingston Memorial Center Advisory Committee for a two-year term, Dana Del Bracco, Richard Gold, Jennifer Sawyer, Wayne Warden. Municipal Accessibility Advisory Committee for staggered terms of one and two years, Dr. Raji Al Amo, Robert Baird, Lorraine Farrar, Robert Goddard, David Greitmeyer, Donna Huff, Drew Kennedy, Robin Kisby, uh, Yana Marikova, Donald Mitchell, Kim Murray, Heidi Penning, Teresa Richard, Michelle Webb, and Marilyn Wilson. The Municipal Heritage Committee for staggered terms of two and four years, Robert Cardwell, Paul Carl, Matt Gervin, Peter Goheen, Edward Grenda, John LeBlanc, Laura Murray, Floyd Patterson, Jonathan Rice, and Donald Taylor for a one-year term. Museums and Collections Advisory Committee for staggered terms of two and four years, Christo Avalas, Brianna Broderick, Diana Gore, Stephen Smith, Bill Visser, and Lindsay Wise. The Rural Advisory Committee for the term of council, Jose Conway, Lindsay Davidson, George Sutherland, Brian Tolles, and Robert Wolf. The Waterfront Master Plan Working Group for a one-year term, Erica Bearsford Kroger, Mary Farrar, Laurel Claus Johnson, Jamie Lemery, David McDonald, Dr. Hans Westenberg. Committee of Adjustment, Kaylin Shea, uh, Blaine Fudge, Craig LaRue, and Vinicio Ribello for the term of council. And Christine Cannon, Stephen Foster, and Richard Paget for a term of two years. CRCA Lemoyne Point Advisory Committee, Harry Cleghorn, John Deemer, Suzanne Hamilton, Chris Hargreaves for staggered terms of two and four years. Jane Murphy for a two-year term and Hiller Atkin for two-year term. Kingston Frontenac Housing Corporation Board of Directors, Peter Hodgson for a three-year term, Jeff Helmsley for a two-year term,
Kingston Frontenac Public Library Board, for the term of council, Barbara Atkin, Judith Brown, Rose DeShaw, Ralph Gatfield, Claudette Richardson, Somnas Sinna, and Monica Stewart. Kingston Municipal Nonprofit Housing, Townhomes Kingston, for a three-year term, Melanie Foote and Warren Shell. Kingston Police Services Board, Andrea Risk, for a two-year term. Taxi Commission, for a one-year term, Charles LaPointe, David Lassard, Courtney Mahoney, Mike Marlin, John Pike. We will call the vote. And just for uh, council to know that uh, we did two, three, four, five, less five C for Councilor Shell, and then six, and then we'll do another vote after for five C alone, okay? Okay, so, so we're voting on all those. So I'm sorry, I stopped at only at item two, so I'll just quickly go through the rest of these. So item three then is Kedco, uh, Shea DeBay, two-year term, Judith Pino, one-year term, Greg Shannon, one-year term, and then the technical appointments. My, my apologies, point of order? Yes. Councilor I had forgotten that uh, I, although he's not one of the people, uh, my stepson had applied for CATCO, and I had declared a, a conflict in the, on the night of the appointments. So I would like to repeat that conflict and withdraw for this portion, and I will hand a piece of paper into uh, to the clerks. So, Mr. Clerk, can we can we vote on these separately? That's probably the easiest way to do that. Yes. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll call the vote on number two, which was everything up to the Keiko appointments. So we'll call the vote on that one first. Thank you. and that carries. So now we will do item three. Councillor Neal has stepped away. We'll do the KEDCO appointments. So I'll ask for the vote on that. Please vote. And that carries. Clause four, recommendation regarding technical appointments to the Housing and Homelessness Advisory Committee. So Ted Smith, uh, County of Frontenac representative, Councilor Francis Smith, Kingston Home Builders Association representative, Neil Ritchie, Kingston Not-for-Profit Housing Association representative, David Jackson, homelessness service provider involved with the Community Advisory Board on Homelessness representative, Ted Smith, Community Leadership Committee representative, Peter Clark, tenant of Social Affordable Housing Services representative, Jeff Burnett. We'll call the question. carries. Uh, under item five, we will do the vote on clause C first. So Councillor Shell is stepping away. So 5C is um, community-based arts group representatives for um, the Arts Advisory Committee, and the representatives are Robert Brooks and Catherine Porter. So please vote. And that carries. The other members that we have for staggered terms of two and four years, a Kingston Arts Council Executive Director, Karen Dolan, arts professionals nominated by, board, by the Board of Kingston Arts Council, Christiana Clemens, Barbara Bell, Jocelyn Purdy, and Jan Allen. And from the education sector, uh, Elaine Susan Armstrong and Tricia Baldwin. And for the Kingston Environmental Advisory Forum, 
the following technical appointments for the term of council from Queen's University, Aaron Ball and Warren Maybe, from Royal Military College, Vivian Paquin and Dr. Tamson Lang, from St. Lawrence College, Shannon Claggett, from the Cataract Region Conservation Authority, Michael Dakin and Sean Fairbank, from the Kingston Frontenac Lennox and Addington Health Unit, Leanne Adicott, Ministry of Environment Representative, Brian Kay and David Arnott as the alternate. The Kingston Memorial Center Advisory Committee, uh, we have for a two-year term, Gail Shook, from the Milton Cemetery Board for the term of council, Cheryl Azale, uh, Britton Smith, and Dr. Hans Westenberg. The Museum and Collections Advisory Committee uh, for a two-year term, Caroline Petsnick, Patricia Fiore, Edward Grenda, community-based representatives, Peter Gower and Zerman Kahn. From the Near Campus Neighborhoods Advisory Committee for a one-year term uh, from Sydenham District, Kanotaki, from Portsmouth, Matt Gervin and Feline Dickinson. From Kingstown, Anne Lahid, from Williamsville, John Grenville, Joan, Bow Joan Bowie is the alternate. Uh, Kingston Rental Property Owners Association Representative Sina Tamatan, Queen's Alma Mater Society, Ariel Gonzalez and Philip Lloyd is an alternate, St. Lawrence Student Association, Andrew Osterman and Morgan Davis is an alternate, Waterfront Master Plan Working Group uh, for a one-year term from the Cataract Region Conservation Authority, Rob McRae, Kingston Front Neck Lennox and Addington Public Health Representative Dave McWilliam, Queen's University School of Urban and Regional Planning, Dr. David Gordon and Patricia Collins is the alternate. Oh, that's all for item five. <laughs> You'll call the question. And that carries. And finally, item six, recommendation regarding appointments to the Downtown Kingston Improvement Area Board of Management. With the following appointments being made for the term of council. Jennifer Allen, Bev Allenson, Christine Ray Bratt, Lynn Carlotto, Justin Chenye, Maria Kronk, Cindy Gibson, David Graham, Nathan Lawler, James Malcolm, Richard McNevin, Tim Pater, Justine Scala, Ed Smith, and Nick Waterfield. You can call the vote. And that carries. Report 17 from the Committee of the Whole. So it's moved by Councillor George, second by Councillor Osanek, that Report 17 from the Committee of the Whole be received and adopted. So there are five clauses. Mr. Clerk, do we need to vote on these separately? The uh, the four, four clauses are where Councillor Bohm has a conflict. He's left the room, so we can vote on all four of them together. Then when it comes to the operating and, and capital budget for the city, uh, we we'll can separate them like we did for a committee of the whole. Okay. So we will vote on clauses one, two, three, and four. Please vote. And that carries. Clause five, approval of municipal operating and capital budgets. Councilor George. Councillor Bohm supposed to come back in? Um, if he's there. Okay. <laughs> Not for a walk. Mr. Kirk, can I see you for a moment?
Okay, so there are, there are ten, 10 clauses. Clause 3 is a conflict for Councillor Holland. Clause 7 is a conflict for Councillor Bohm. And Clause 10 is a conflict for Councillor Holland and Councillor Bohm. So, so Councillor Holland, you, you can come back for a minute. What we'll, what we'll do? What we'll do is we'll vote on clauses one, two, four, five, six, eight, and nine. Councillor George. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm just wondering, can we separate uh, separate out uh, under five, number one, uh, in particular the, the two bullets there? Vote on that separately. Under number f number five. So these are, so you're talking about point f number five under clause five? No, under clause one. Oh, point, oh I see. Clause one. So clause there's one. Two bullets there. So you want to separate the 155,000 for uh, Don So I can vote the way I did at budget deliberations. Um, given, yes, so given that those two points and the second point is just where to fund it from, so what we can do is what we'll do instead is we will separate clause one. Oh no, we can't do that. So we're just going to separate just those two subpoints. Mr. Clerk, can I see you for a minute? Okay, that's fine. So we're just going to separate them for voting pur purposes. So we will deal with clause one separately. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the first paragraph with the following two subpoints. Okay. So first, we will call the vote on the council approve the 2015 general municipal operating budget in the amount of 328 million two hundred nineteen thousand four hundred thirteen. So we'll call the vote on that clause first. Okay, on second thought, uh, I've been advised that if we, depending on how the vote goes on the second bullet points, that could change the number in the first clause. So actually what we should do is we should vote on the second two points of the first clause first. Does everyone follow? So what we'll do instead is we will call the vote on the two subpoints. So 155,455 be added to the Housing and Social Services Operating Budget for Don House Woman Shelter in the interim to remain open in 2015 until staff to report back by Q13 2015 with possible options to keep Don House open beyond 2015 and the funding for which to be accessed from the Working Fund Reserve. So we will call the question on those two subpoints first. Council McLaren, it is on the floor. You can speak to it. Thank you, Your Worship. I would actually like everyone, because I know that this was a, a close vote last time, and one of the people is not here, that we consider that Don House has spoken today. They're going to provide everything that is needed and asked for to be part of the process. There was an anomaly that uh, did not allow them to apply for funding at the proper time. I would ask you all to reconsider and to support Don House. They are a, a woman's shelter that is at capacity and that should remain open, at least until they are no longer needed. So please, I ask you to vote in favor of keeping Don House open. Thank you. So. The only thing that I'm wary about here is redoing the debate that we did during budget a couple of weeks ago. So technically, we can reopen this and we can, re we can debate it all again, but I am going to ask, just in the interest of time and given the other items that we have on our agenda, that coming from the Committee of the Whole, we've already had that debate to keep your comments, please to uh, uh, keep your comments brief. Having said that, you do have the right to speak. Councillor Straub. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, 
Before I speak, I, I'm confused because it seems to me that this would be reconsideration because we're voting on the same thing twice. But is that, can you clarify that for me, please? So my understanding is that this is not a reconsideration because this is a recommendation that's coming from Committee of the Whole. So Council has not made a final decision. What we have done is we have made a determination as the Committee of the Whole to bring this recommendation forward. So the only thing I'm asking is not to re-debate the whole thing, but people are free to vote however they wish. Thank you. Okay, well, I'll just point out that the obvious thing that everyone's noticed is that last time the vote was 7-6, and uh, there was 13 people voting that time. This time there's only 12. So if everyone votes the same way, uh, this will actually fail on a tie. And I don't think that's uh, a fair reflection of the uh, communication that we've been having since that vote on budget time. And I would like everyone to consider uh, what's best for the city and for Don House at the same time. Uh, we have uh, we had a good debate on this and we have actually found a common ground now. I do believe uh, when it comes up, uh, there is a motion later in uh, the agenda that addresses uh, the same subject, and then I believe we will find common ground at that time. And uh, if we remove it from the budget, it makes that point moot. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're voting. Uh, with Councillor Hutchison not being here, the outcome could well be different, and then it would lose on a technicality. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor George. Thank you, Worship. Through you, I certainly hope that Councillor isn't impugning that we're doing something underhanded here. My my rationale for separating it out is as it was at budget time. Quite simply, it goes against policy. I don't know how many freaking times we have to break the rules around this chamber, but we consistently do it, unfortunately, and it's going to come back to, to hurt us in the end. Um, I'm not going to, to support, or support this at this time because it goes against policy, and I believe that when we create policy, we should stand by it. Um, we are accountable, and... Uh, you know, those that want to break the rules, go out and break the rules. Um, but I'm not prepared to do that. So I believe that uh, I have no problem with, with seeking additional support for Don House, but this was not the place to do it at budget time. We should have sent staff away and given them the opportunity to present or speak with Don House, get their financials and bring a report to us and tell us exactly how much. This is more than was ever given before. And this, this is just absolutely ridiculous in my view, so I won't support it. And I hope that those of you who saw that way at budget time have the guts to do the same thing again tonight, regardless of how many of us are here. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, will you take the chair? I will, and I recognize you. Thank you. Um, I certainly agree with the concerns that Council George has put forward. I think that it was an unwise move of Council to handle this file the way that we did. Having said that, now this is not a rule, but this is a convention, that when Committee of the Whole makes a decision, that when it comes up to Council, that we come together and we endorse the decision of the entire Committee. So even though I am against this, even though I feel it was the wrong way to handle this decision, I will support it for that reason. That at the end of the day, we had the full debate. I was on the losing end of that, but I respect the will of counsel, and so I will support it at this point. Thank you. Much appreciated, and I return the chair. Thank Sorry you, for the Is there anybody comment. else that wishes to speak? We will call the vote. And that carries. So now we will deal with the remaining section of Clause 1, which is, of course, the rest of the operating budget in the amount of $328,219,413. We'll call the vote. And that carries. So now we will call the vote on clauses 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9. Councillor Holland, you can stay for these ones. <laughs> we'll let you know. So 
So two, four, five, six, eight, and nine. And call the vote. And that carries. Now we will call the vote on Clause 3. Councillor Holland is stepping away. Let's please vote. And that carries. Next, we will call the vote on Clause 7. Councillor Bohm is stepping away. Please vote. And that carries. And finally, Clause 10, both Councillor Bohm and Councillor Holland have stepped away. Please vote. And that carries. All right, we have uh, one information report. Report on delegated authority for real estate transactions. Are there any questions? Seeing none, we have no information reports from members of council. Miscellaneous business, we do have two motions of council that are required. First, that as requested by Scouts Canada, council proclaim February 15th to February the 22nd is Guide Scouts Week in the city of Kingston. Moved by Councillor Neal, seconded by Councillor Schell. Please vote. And that carries. Clause, or sorry, motion two, that as requested by Scouts Canada, Council approve the raising of the flag on February 16th, 2015 in the city of Kingston. Councillor George. Moved by Councillor George, second by Councillor Shell. Call the vote. Still waiting on one person to vote. And that carries. New motions. Number one, moved by Councillor George, seconded by Deputy Mayor Neal. Whereas several million dollars have been spent on the revitalization of the Kingston Memorial Center, including the Linear Park, Outdoor Aquatic Center, and the Memorial Wall and Garden, with considerable community input and engagement. And whereas the Memorial Center is a historic municipal site recognizing the service and sacrifice of our veterans, and whereas recent studies have shown the midtown core of the city, including Williamsville and Kings Court Strathcona, have a low ratio of parkland per capita, and whereas the Limestone District School Board is continuing to seek a suitable solution from their secondary school park process, therefore be it resolved that the City of Kingston reaffirms its clear commitment to not consider the use of the Memorial Center site for any new school construction, and that the City of Kingston work collaboratively with the Limestone District School Board to work towards a resolution of their secondary school park process. Councillor George. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. I've spoken to this issue twice before, and I believe everything of importance was already spelled out in the whereas clauses. Um, one thing I would like to do, though, is uh, I guess uh, uh, put forward a, uh, an amendment, if I may, and I believe my seconder has agreed that this is of a friendly manner and we have reviewed this with staff so they're well aware of it and I believe that the uh, clerk's department has it up there for you and this would simply be added to the very last therefore that that the city of Kingston work collaboratively with the limestone district school board to work towards a resolution of their secondary school park process and then it would say including the consideration of the Cook brothers property which we did see of a potential site plan that uh, one of the presenters showed uh, earlier this evening 
Um, this would also, because in previous motions that were supported by council, um, we had spoken about uh, not, not showing an interest in having the, the Memorial Center site considered, and you're looking at me like you want to. So I, I'm just going to just going to stop you there, yeah. uh, just so we can just separate this out, so that this won't count to your to your time on the main motion, but just okay. to the amendment. So it's put forward by Councillor George, seconded by Councillor Neal. We won't accept that as a friendly. I think that this is something that we need to vote on. It's it's a, it's a matter of substance, okay? Uh, sure. In particular, because of consideration of previous motions of council. So is so, Councillor George, you're welcome then to speak to the amendment. The amendment, so certainly. Uh, the rationale behind that is that in previous motions that were supported by council, we spoke to both the Memorial Center site and Cook Brothers as being off the table. Um, we've had discussions with uh, Councillor Hutchinson, who uh, is now, I don't want to speak for him, he's not here, but uh, um, showed uh, support for removing Cook Brothers from the previous uh, um, recommendations that were supported by Council, um, so that it could in fact work with, with Kate and Fields. Um, to add something uh, area and other potential uh, amenities that the school could give consideration to if they were to, to choose that site through discussions and, and work with our city staff. So that's the reason we wanted to include it this time so that uh, we're really only speaking to the Memorial Center site and again, our rationale for wanting to keep Memorial Center site as is and allowing, um, you know, uh, residents across the city to continue continue to contribute to what they would like to see as amenities on that site uh, as we did last year for the um, um, what was it last year for the uh, pitch that we uh, put in at a uh, request of a local club and uh, so you know we'd like to keep that that uh, potentially available for them so that's the rationale behind the cooks brothers so uh, we could I don't know if my seconder wishes to speak to it or we just want to call the vote uh, or unless somebody else wants to speak. So is there anybody that wishes to speak to the amendment only? Councillor Stroud. Thank you, Your Worship. Just very quickly, I, I think it's, it is very important to add this to the current motion uh, to show that, uh, that there's some substance to the clause uh, that that, the, uh, therefore be re resolved clause which is uh, talking about collaboration with the limestone district school board this is putting some meat on the bones for that it, uh, it, because in the past as councillor george just mentioned it had been removed from the table and this is, is showing that we're uh by adding this this amendment it shows that we're, we're sincere in our wish to work with the board to find a site thank you thank you deputy mayor will you take the chair i will and i recognize you Thank you. I would just like to add my support to this amendment. I think that this is very important that Council makes a statement that although there will probably be some deb debate in a few minutes about the Memorial Center property, that Council can come together and agree that this is a property that we're willing to consider. In particular, given the fact that in the past Council said no, I think it's significant that now we are changing course and we are extending our hand in partnership, at least on this property, to say that we are willing to consider all options. And so for that reason, I certainly commend the mover for putting forward this amendment, and I certainly encourage council to support it. Thank you. Thank you, and I return the chair. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wants to speak to the amendment? Councillor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, do, I do support the amendment. I think it is important to uh, affirm what we're saying here which is that we in this in this clause which is that we are wanting to work with the the board i mean it, it's i do have an issue though with the fact that we seem to be defining collaboration in a very one-sided manner here by directing um which properties we are we are prepared to work on um i would like to extend considering the the situation that the board finds themselves in, I would like to extend this definition to any city-owned properties. However, I uh, don't have that amendment and fear that won't pass. <laughs> are we prepared to move that? So, Councillor Honda, are you, are you proposing a motion? I, yes, I will move that we, we amend the amendment 
to state any city owned property strike Cooks Brothers and read including the consideration of any additional city owned property. So I'm going to I'm going to rule that motion to amend out of order simply because that would be contrary to the previous clause. So we can't say city owned property because the mem that would include the memorial center. So okay, if speak. if you wanted if you wanted to put a motion to say any city owned property uh, I don't know if we really want to do this. I I, I think that and not wanting to debate this, I think that when you take the wording of the entire second clause that clearly is, is pretty open-ended and is just saying including Cooks Brothers, I think the thought there is because there was a previous motion that said no to Cooks Brothers. So I'm not sure that that's necessary. I think that would make things really messy. Okay. Uh, can I still t speak to the amendment? Yes. Thank yes, you. you may. So I'm just urging council to... Uh, put forward our own efforts in collaboration to match what the board has been doing and what, has, what they have demonstrated this evening. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now. I think uh, the amendment is, is an important step. Um, however, I just I would really like to ensure that we are thinking about all possibilities on, in this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak to the amendment only? Seeing none, we will call the question. Still two people left to vote. And that carries. Councillor George, you have three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock to speak to the motion as amended. Okay, I'll make it very quick. Um, just for clarification, all the other city properties are still on the table. Um, this Cooks Brother was only added because we had removed it previously. It was no longer one that we wanted to discuss, but now we do. So all of the city properties are on the table for discussion, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody that wishes to speak to the motion as amended? Councillor Neal. Thank you very much. Um, I have a quick question to staff, uh, just for clarification, and then I'd like to speak briefly to the to the motion before us. Um, as I understand it, perhaps the commissioner can comment on this. Right now, our existing policy from two different motions of the previous council, and until those directions are changed, they continue to be policy, is that we said no to the Memorial Center and we said no to Cooks, but in a separate motion we said we would work collaboratively with, with the school board virtually anywhere else. Is that an accurate assessment of where we sit right now? Commissioner Hurdle. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, you are correct. The direction uh, to staff was to not consider uh, Cook Brothers property or Memorial Center, so both of them. And also the direction was to work with the school board on other potential sites. Um, and unless that direction is changed, then staff would continue to work with that previous direction from council. Great, thank you very much. Um, there. I, again, am supporting this primarily because uh, of the importance of parkland in this area of the city. Uh, on a per capita basis, Williamsville and Kings Court, uh, as I, I believe it's Kings Court and Strathcona, have the least per capita amount of park space in the city. So to give up potentially park space is, I think, a risk. The other thing is, and other, and people have brought this up, citizens have brought this up as a concern, if this became a school site, we would have three school, high schools 
in the old portion of the, the urban core, in the old portion of the city, one a block away from the other, Rigi and, and uh, Memorial Center, and the other less than a, a kilometer away as the crow flies. So we would have these three schools in a very, very closed uh, space, and the north end, I believe, would be less well served. Uh, there are clearly options, and we're, we're putting those options back on the table. Uh, the, the school board trustees that made their presentation tonight, I think, pointed out that uh, the, the second location that we've added back on this, the Cat and Fields, is indeed probably a more accessible site, a, a better site for, for a school. It's still, I would suggest it's actually closer to the traditional downtown than the Memorial Center. And it's not, it's equidistant, it's not that much farther from the north end. So uh, I think, I think it, it would be a site definitely worth exploring. And this motion empowers our staff to talk to school board staff and to work out the logistics of that as a potential school site. But it reaffirms what has passed in two or three previous motions of council, the declaration that the Memorial Center will remain as parkland and part of our, our memorial commitment and part of uh, our commitment to the Agricultural Society. So I, I uh, implore council to again support this. We've, we've all received letters. It's a tough call because it's probably 60, 40, one way or the other in all of our districts. But I think the majority of people across the city would rather maintain this as, as recreational parkland and a memorial uh, tribute. So I urge you to vote in favor of this motion as amended. Thank you. Next on my list is Councillor Allen. Thank you. Uh, they've got me a longer microphone now. That's great. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to speak very uh, quickly um, uh, on behalf of well, not on behalf, but to the point of uh, the fact that I represent the, the largely rural district that takes up much of our land mass of the city of Kingston. Um, and agriculture uh, is a regional thing, so we have regional partners who extend beyond the city of Kingston who bring food and contribute to our economy and rely on links to our urban area in terms of showing people what agriculture really is about and showing young people what agriculture is really about. And uh, I had the privilege of attending a, a rural advisory committee meeting in the fall where uh, each group that participates in the fair um, spoke to how important and how unique that site is in terms of that. And I think we should be looking at ways to improve uh, how we collaborate with the fair uh, and, and promote agriculture because our agricultural community is having, and this is to the motion, but is having uh, succession issues, as we know, in rural areas outside of urban areas. Farmers, kids aren't taking over. So the people who are taking over are suburban, urban youth who are interested in food, who are interested in going into working with their hands. And their best place for exposure is when, when we do things at the Memorial Center with the farmer's market, with the agricultural barns. And so that's really important, and they've expressed that to me uh, through many emails. I'm sure you've gotten some of those as well, uh, phone calls, that sort of thing. It's a very important site to the agricultural community and to the rural community that supports our urban core. And I want to encourage that relationship 
And I think this site is key to that. So I'll be supporting this motion in terms of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor McLaren. Thank you. When I went door to door campaigning for this position, I heard about eight to one in favor of not building a school in a memorial center. So in that sense, this is actually quite an easy, uh, an easy motion to support. It seems to be the will of the people in my district. And the emails that I have received over the last few weeks suggest that it is growing in favor of not building a school there. So I will most certainly be supporting this motion. I only wish that uh, we could have worked hand in glove with the uh, school board and administered the coup de grace before, uh, together as opposed to separately. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, will you take the chair? I will, and I recognize you. Thank you. I think it's important to understand that this motion is not directing anyone to build a school on the Memorial Center. This is simply about whether or not to have a discussion, whether or not to get some more information that might settle this question one way or the other. I think the delegations even said that maybe, maybe a school on the Memorial Center site just won't work. Maybe there's no way to find a compromise that will make everybody happy, that there's no way that we can get the school and the agricultural society and the other interests in the green space and our other investments to work. And that could be entirely right. But in the light of history, when, when these students who presented here tonight, when they look back on the decision we made here as council tonight, would it not be better to at least be able to say, well, we looked into the option and it didn't work for these reasons, rather than to just dismiss it out of hand so that people could point back and say, oh, if council had only been open to that discussion, maybe we could have done better. All we're saying is, let's keep all of the options open. We can always narrow it down later. We can always say no later. But allowing for that discussion now allows for the best possible option for the school board and for the city. And I don't know about you, but when I saw those students here tonight imploring council to at least keep that option open, I was hit that really these are the stakeholders that matter. These are the ones, these are the Kingstonians whose opinion should matter the most. And for them to have come from two different high schools, from Casey and QE, to come before us tonight and say, please, at least keep the discussion open. I think it would be a disservice to our youth to shut that door. Now, at the same time, we have responsibility to be realistic. And I think it's good to voice the concerns and the possibility that this may not work, but at the end of the day, we can say to them, at least we tried. So for that reason, I am going to ask council to vote against the first clause of this motion. So I'm gonna ask that they're separated. I'm gonna vote against the first clause, but I'm gonna vote in favor of the second. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. You're very welcome, and I return the chair. Thank you. Next on my list is Councillor Holland. Thank you, Your Worship. First, I just would like to say that it's, there doesn't seem to be anything about this decision that is easy, uh, certainly not when we're looking at the future of students in this city, and as you've spoken very eloquently to the fact that we've had some of them here tonight demonstrating what we have, who we are actually um, meant to be representing on this issue. Uh, we've heard that there are students who can't graduate with their peers because of programming issues, because of the desperate need for a new high school in this city immediately. That is not an acceptable fate for any student. I certainly would accept, wouldn't accept it for my children, and if we wouldn't accept it for ours, we cannot accept it for anyone else's. So on that point, uh, I am open to having a conversation desperate to have a conversation with the board that they tried to initiate with a letter and that we are now preempting that opportunity to meet and get more information if we pass this motion tonight. 
All that I am concerned with is the timing of this motion when it comes down to it and the lack of information available. I have tried for four days straight to get as much information on the feasibility of each of these sites discussed here tonight and I continually came upon contradictory information. Of course, there were always reports generated that will give a different version of, of the reality. My faith is in the board to produce that information. It is in their interest to serve the students of this community. And so if we can't allow them to provide more information to us as councillors and to the city as a whole, then we are doing a disservice on this issue. For that reason, I would like to defer the first clause. So I move that the first be it resolved clause be deferred to the April 7th, 2015 meeting of city council. So, so we have a motion of deferral on the floor. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Turner. So that the paragraph five, which would be the first resolve clause. So just the clause that deals with the Memorial Center site would be deferred to the April 7th council meeting. There is debate on a motion to defer only with respect to time or place. So anyone that wishes to speak. Okay, seeing none, we will call the vote. Still one person to vote. And that loses by a vote of four to eight. So Councillor Holland, you still have three minutes on the clock to speak to the main motion as amended. Thank you, Your Worship. It, it seems others have information that I don't have. Um, there, the views presented on the, the lack of feasibility on the Memorial Center site, uh, to me, are not the views of experts, they're the views of neighbors, they're the views of politicians, they're the views of community members, which I do respect wholeheartedly. However, as I've already stated, uh, my utmost concern is for the students in this city who have been not well served by the ongoing process to find a new home for a school. This is not just the board's problem, this is our problem. We have ownership on many of these sites. We have the opportunity to work together. Some of the partnerships alluded to tonight would be the types of things that I think any 21st century council should be implored to explore. And hearing that previous councils have ruled the Memorial Center off limits isn't a valid argument to me. We are a new council. We consist of seven new members. And the whole point of having a new council, the whole point of being put here as new council members is to look at past decisions and move forward in a direction that best serves the interests of the city. I believe that by the virtue of the fact that seven new members have been elected to this council, we have the opportunity to go back on any past council decision. And I will not accept the, the, anything dictated by a, a past council without doing the due diligence as a new councillor and I would expect that my colleagues would do the same. For all of the reasons I've mentioned, I cannot support ruling out a possible site, so I will not be supporting this motion. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes, Councillor Strapp. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think, uh, I think we got to back up for a second here and actually uh, frame this discussion again for what it actually is. Uh, we're getting tunnel vision here. Let's go back to why we're here. Who made this bed that we're lying in right now? Why is this council uh, talking about this? Is it because of previous motions of council? Procedurally, yes. But actually, this whole thing goes back to a single decision by the Limestone District School Board to close two schools, two community schools. That's what created the community outrage, and that's what's creating all of these uh, heated feelings that we're all feeling here tonight, including myself. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we've, as the 
as Mr. Mayor uh, pointed out, the students here uh, gave a great presentation. And uh, of course, we have to think about the students. It is about the students. The programming mentioned by Councillor Holland, same thing. We have to think about that. But how did we find ourselves in the situation where there was a lack of adequate programming at a school in Kingston? The, that was a bed made by the, the school board. The school board has made some decisions and we're expect, expected to take them as gospel. And then we're expected to give them a site to fix their problem that they created. Now, I'm all for collaborating with the school board on finding a solution that's good for all of the people of Kingston. But let's be conscious of how we got here. And the reason that I, will, I am supporting Councillor George's motion is because it's in the best interests of all the people of Kingston to keep the Memorial Center as is. And we can find a solution to the school board's problem that isn't a one specific agenda being pushed by one group in the community that isn't necessarily the will of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Councillor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. I, I think it's been said before that this is definitely not an easy decision, and uh, this is one where I've uh, reached out to many people in my district, as I have CFB Kingston there, and as the Memorial Centre is, is a site to, to honour the sacrifices of uh, those who have served before us, basically what I've been hearing is uh, putting a school there would be something that would in, inherently change the nature of that site and could possibly overshadow uh, what is existing right now. And the, the consensus uh, from, from the people that I've spoken with is that that would kind of take away from the site that's existing. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, it's, it's in my opinion that it's very hard to have a conversation about other sites with this site left on the table, and that is why I'll be supporting this motion. It is something that is, uh, it's, it's not an easy decision, and uh, I think everybody's kind of going through the same process in their head. Are we, are we being transparent? Have all the options uh, been considered? And is there always going to be more information to come? I'm, I'm sure there will be, but it gets to a point where with this on the table, it almost seemed like, like it overshadows any other choice or, or even looking at any other site. So that's why I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that has not spoken that wishes to speak? Councillor Turner. Through you, Your Worship, I think it's a very difficult decision, and I have been doing my due diligence and researching it all week and talking to many different people. But I think you have to look at the vision of the city and you have to talk to many people and looking at the passion with these students that came and spoke to us, it's a very difficult decision. Um, and how cities grow in the future, you have to look at, at the people and the people that are involved in the decision. So I think looking forward, it's a very difficult decision and I'm gonna go with the mayor and vote with you. Thank you. Councillor George, you can speak last. Thank you, Worship. <laughs> I won't speak long, Jim. Um, I have one thing to say to Councillor Stroud. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I think I mentioned that as well a year and a half ago or something. Um, I appreciate the delegations that came this evening to speak to us and, and you know their heartfelt comments and such. But I also go back to the two of the gentlemen who were a part of why the Memorial Center is where it is today and what it represents. One is Britt Smith, who's still actively involved in our community, and the other one was the late Judge Henderson. Those two gentlemen, Judge Henderson was an MP at the time, back in the early 50s, were the ones who went out and fought to get the money from the federal government to create that memorial to those who fought on our behalf. And the intent was that it was going to be community involvement. It was going to be the people, if there's something was going to happen there, it's a true memorial, the whole grounds, not just, not just the, the arena, not just the memorial garden and wall that we have there now, but the grounds itself was intended to be a memorial. And it would be up to the residents of this city to decide what goes on there. And what we're hearing loud and clear, Councillor McLaren alluded to what he was hearing at the door, um, the odds, and they're probably very close to, I think, what a lot of people are, are, are thinking. The people in the West End that I've talked to are very much in support of keeping the Memorial Center as it is 
and allowing either the, the Memorial Center Advisory Board, who allows people to come and make presentation and such, to have a vision as to what they want to see happen there and then come to the city to hopefully garner support and something that we can do for the community. Um, I don't know what else I can say beyond that, but I don't want to see that memorial disturbed in a fashion that I think putting a high school would on that particular site because that was not the original intent. And yes, Councillor Holland has, has alluded to the fact that we can go back and change things. But you know what? This is one of those changes I don't think we should be looking at making because of what it truly represents to this city as a whole, especially now that we're one big city with the former uh, townships involved. Um, you know, we have to realize that former councillors made decisions based on the information provided to them at the time. Yeah, we may not agree with some of it today, but we shouldn't be putting them down because they did the best job at the time they could. And, um, you know, to speak to say, well, we have seven new councillors, so let's start making changes. Uh-uh, I'm sorry, but we all have to do our due diligence to, to, to garner all the information that we possibly can to make a decision. My feeling is from what I'm hearing around here that a lot of the councillors have done that and have taken the opportunity to attend meetings, listen to their constituents and, and have made a decision based on that. So I just hope that council will support this motion tonight and we can move forward and work with the, the Limestone District School Board on other potential sites throughout the city because now we've opened them up. And uh, I'm hoping that we can come to some conclusion that everybody is gonna find a happy medium and we're gonna see the dust settle on this issue once and for all. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. So with that, uh, we will call the vote, but we're going to separate the, uh, the two, therefore, clauses. So first we will call the vote on the first clause, therefore be resolved that the City of Kingston reaffirms its clear commitment to not consider the use of the Memorial Center site for any new school construction. Please vote. And that carries by a vote of nine to three. Second clause, that the City of Kingston work collaboratively with the Limestone District School Board to work towards a resolution of their secondary school park process. Please vote. And that carries 12 to zero. Motion number two. Moved by Deputy Mayor Neal, seconded by Councillor George. Whereas only once has the City of Kingston engaged in integrity commissioner at a cost to the taxpayers of $53,000, which produced no recommended action. And whereas our previous council approved the hiring of an integrity commissioner on an annual retainer. And whereas an initial RFP failed to find a suitable applicant. And whereas the Municipal Act empowers municipal councils by motion and with due process to recommend the hiring of such a commissioner when and if needed. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Kingston not hire an integrity commissioner on retainer and that any current RFP process to do so be cancelled. Deputy Mayor Neal. Yes, thank you very much. Um, this, as many of you will recall, was quite contested in the previous uh, council. Uh, I'm very, very happy that uh, Councillor George was able to second this motion. I, I think that this is an unwarranted, unnecessary expense. Uh, we, in my recollection, and I've talked to some people who have spent many more years on council than I have, uh, at no time have we had to resort to an integrity commissioner. It happened in the last council by a 7-6 vote. It cost us $53,000. And all that it achieved was a, a kind of no action report, no action rec recommended. Under the Municipal Act, we always have the power. If I, if, if two people in this council feel that I did something wrong, <laughs> and it may be Kevin George, no, and <laughs> you, can, you can always bring a motion forward 
to to uh, council and request under the municipal act that an investigate investigation be sought. And all it takes is a majority of council to say yes to that. And then we go through the process. But to, to spend money on a retainer for something that we've only done in recent memory has only happened once with no resolve coming out of it, I think would be a foolish uh, expenditure. And so I hope people can uh, vote no, uh, vote yes for this motion, vote no for, uh, for an integrity commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Councilor Stroud. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Deputy Mayor. I'm happy to support this motion. I'd just like to say uh, I'm supporting it on an intellectual level because I agree with, with the reasons stated just now. It's unnecessary, but also it's unnecessary for me on an emotional level because I feel like I've gotten to know you guys around the horseshoe here in the last three months uh, to the point where I, uh, I, you know, hiring a permanent integrity commissioner is just not what you do amongst friends. Like you, <laughs> you you're working together and you're going to trust each other. We're having some great discussions here, you know. I know things are going to get a little heated. We see that time and again, but we've shown already that, you know, we all swore an oath and we swore it sincerely. And I trust, that's good enough to me. That, your word is good enough to me. And I know that uh, if there is, as Deputy Mayor said, if there's any issues, we can work through it together. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. That, that gave me the warm and fuzzies right there. That was great. Anybody else that wishes to speak? Councillor Allen. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, I have to sit farther back now. Um, the... <laughs> I, I think I'll support this motion, but I, I, I do uh, do it hesitantly. I think it's important that, uh, jokes aside, that we have a pretty steep responsibility. And the reason integrity commissioners have come up across the province and other cities is, um, the, is, is that we're seeking transparency, openness, third-party oversight, independent observers. Those kinds of things are what... Um, cities and their people are asking for. And so I'm supporting this motion uh, that, so that on, on good faith that this council will support future motions that help us be more transparent and open with our citizens so that we can be clear about what's happening uh, around the table, what's guiding our discussions, and make sure that our citizens are involved. And uh, that, those are the kind of policies uh, that our city should be built on uh, instead of having uh, what some might call a watchdog. Uh, in, we should have a true set of policies that we rely on for transparency and openness and accountability. And I think that's what we owe to each other if we decide not to go, uh, if we decide to vote against having a, um, an integrity commissioner. So. I will be supporting this motion as well. Thank you. Next on my list is Councillor Bill. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, uh, I'd just like to echo the words of uh, Councillor Allen there, and, and part of the reasoning for that is just uh, simple numbers. Um, looking at uh, $53,000 a year times four, you're up into a couple hundred thousand dollars, and that was called upon once in a four-year term and there was no recommendation really from that. So, I mean, from a simple fiscal evaluation of the situation, looking at it, even if in four years we needed to call up and create an issue, or there was an issue that happened and that needed to be called once, you're still not really fiscally making a lot of sense with that. So with that in mind, I'm gonna be uh, supporting this motion as well. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, will you take the chair? I will and I recognize you. Great, thank you. Um, just just respond to, to a comment that had made earlier about the report that came back from the previous integrity commissioner. There actually was an action item that was recommended out of that. And that action item was to go back and to have another look at our code of conduct and change it, tighten it up, make some recommendations so that council would work better. And I think it's important to make this case that 
the whole idea of having an integrity commissioner on retainer was not so that they could investigate us. It was basically to help us to get the code of conduct the way that it should be. That was the whole idea. Now, I understand that that seems to have been lost in the conversation and we're talking about only an investigator. And the fact is, if that's what we're talking about, you're absolutely right. We shouldn't need an integrity commissioner because Bill 8 has just passed at the provincial level and clearly says that, you know what, the Ontario Ombudsman is more than happy to step in and to investigate something if we're not going to deal with it ourselves. So I appreciate Councillor Stroud's comments. My sense is that this is a council that will function well together. We're going to have our disagreements, um, but clearly, you know, there's not going to be, I don't think, an animosity on a personal level. I'm very happy to see that. That being said, understand that the whole idea of the Integrity Commissioner was to do something very different from that. And that was basically just to make, make us uh, function better, to educate us more about if we had uh, potential pecuniary interest, for example, so that we could avoid any problems down the road, more to be proactive. Um, so it's pretty clear the way the winds are blowing here. I think that, you know, we've decided we don't want an investigator, we don't want an integrity commissioner on retainer, and so I'm happy to support that. But just to understand that there could be an opportunity for us moving forward to actually work on our code of conduct, to be more proactive, just to make sure that we never have to deal with a problem later on, that we can deal with it, be proactive about it, so it doesn't blow up later on. So thank you very much. May I, may I have the chair back? Yes, you may. Great. Thank you. Is there anybody else that has not spoken that wishes to speak? Seeing none, Council or Deputy Mayor, you may speak last. Yes, and just very quickly, I appreciate the comments about transparency and accountability. I appreciate the comments about uh, needing to improve our code of conduct and take another look at that. Those are policies. We don't need an integrity commissioner to improve our policies. And so I, I would embrace any of those, uh, any motions that come forward to open up, uh, gov to have more open government, to have more transparency, to ensure more accountability, to improve on our, uh, on our code of conduct. We don't need an external uh, person to tell us or to tell us how to do that. I think collectively we can work to those ends. So thank you. Thank you. So with that, we will call the vote. Please vote. And that carries unanimously. Motion number three. Moved by Councillor Candon, seconded by Councillor George. Whereas the City of Kingston Council approved a 10-year housing and homelessness plan in 2013, whereas the City of Kingston Council, with advice from its Housing and Homelessness Advisory Committee, issued and request for proposals for the provision of services included in the 10-year housing and homelessness plan in 2014, whereas not-for-profit organizations spent time and money to submit detailed proposals in response to the requests for proposals, and in some cases restructured their organizations and services in order to meet the goals and objectives of the City of Kingston's 10-year housing and homelessness plan, whereas the City of Kingston Council is approving its 2015 operational budget, which includes additional funding in the amount of $155,000 to Don House Shelter without a formal proposal or detailed information on the use of these public funds, Therefore, be it resolved that Council requires Don House Shelter to submit a detailed operational and financial plan subject to staff review and report to Council before any of the additional $155,000 is provided and that staff be directed to report back to Council with information on the 10-year housing and homelessness plan goals and objectives and the request for proposal process that was followed to establish the plan. Councillor Candon, would you like to speak? Thank you, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at first glance, this may seem uh, as though it could be a controversial motion. Uh, so I, I made some notes uh, outlining exactly where it's coming from um, and what the purpose of the motion is. Essentially, it's a motion for accountability and transparency. Uh, it's also an acknowledgement of other social agencies uh, that have not received funding and had to close their doors. Um, Don House provides good services to the community. I'm not taking exception to Don House, rather I'm pointing out uh, a missing component to a previous motion um, that, that was lacking a justification of funds. Uh, 
Understanding where money is going is absolutely paramount for maintaining our integrity and relationship with taxpayers. Uh, I hope that in the future we put ourselves in a position where we can do our due diligence, follow standard procedure, and treat all nonprofit organizations equally. Uh, this is not a motion of reconsideration. It's simply asking Don House uh, that we, uh, what we have asked other social agencies to do in the same situation. Uh, I appreciate and acknowledge that uh, that they that they have uh, already put those wheels in motion. So we do appreciate that a great deal. Um, essentially, I'm, all I'm asking for is a uh, is a minimum standard for uh, our code of conduct, and that we uh, are accountable with the money that we spend. And for that reason, I, you can support my motion. Thank you, Councillor McLaren. Thank you. I agree that. Uh, on that day that we made this motion, uh, we perhaps did not do all of our proper uh, accountability, so I am encouraged to support this as well. I feel that we should have transparency and accountability uh, and that uh, we should have the info, and I understand that they are going to provide that, so I'm very happy to support this. I would just like to make two small amendments. The, uh, the As presented, the motion uh, rounds the money figure to the nearest thousand. I would like to uh, a new motion to say that references the any references to the 155,000 in paragraphs four and five be amended to 155, 455. And the second uh, minor my adjustment, which I spoke with uh, Councillor Candon about, is to amend paragraph five by deleting uh, words subject to staff review and report to council and to be replaced with the words so as to facilitate options to keep Don House open beyond 2015. So, and, so I'm just going to stop you there. I think we're going to deal with these motions to amend separately. Okay. So for the first motion to amend, uh, is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Rosanek. So Councillor McLaren, you have the floor. I'm going to ask, you may speak to the first motion to amend. We'll deal with that. We'll call the vote and then we'll move to um, the second motion to amend. So you have the floor, you have a new, the, the clock restarts. If you want to speak to the first motion to amend, you're welcome to do that. Okay. Well, with regards to the first uh, to amend, we should be clear, we should be precise. Don House gave us a very precise number because they've actually done these calculations before and it should be, uh, in, it should be similar to the numbers that we passed earlier in the month or last month. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anybody that wishes to speak to the first motion to amend to the amendment only? Okay, seeing none, we'll call the question. And that carries. So now we will deal with the second motion to amend. Is there a seconder for the second Amendment. Moved by Councillor Bone, or sorry, sec moved by Councillor McLaren, second by Councillor Bone. Councillor McLaren, would you like to speak to the second motion to amend? Thank you. The issue I had was the term subject to staff review sounds a little bit um, ambiguous to me. I think of um, in, on one side of the spectrum of meaning, Russia often says that they will subject prices at gas bomb to uh, Ukraine to be subject to review and it's being used as a hammer or as a threat and I do not want that to happen. On the other side of the spectrum of meaning, uh, people can review a movie and say it was riveting and it really means nothing. So in order to maintain clarity, in order to keep transparency and accountability, I would like to put in the actual words from the previous motion that we passed and put it in so as to facilitate options to keep Don House open beyond 2015. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone on the motion to amend? Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Neal. Thank you. I'm going to support the motion because I think, uh, and it, the first time I uh, first blushed when I read this, uh, as somebody who's been on the Housing and Homelessness Committee for a while and on council, while this whole process evolved. Subject to staff review and report to council is not typically what we do with other agencies. 
there is a process and we do get information on a on a broader sense but uh, perhaps the commissioner can correct me if I'm wrong but I don't believe that we get a shelter by shelter typically I think we leave that up to staff to Commissioner to do uh, thank you uh, through you mr. mayor uh, staff do actually review all the proposals that the shelter submit that was part of the RFP process so that's not out of the norm in, start, in terms of review. And then what we did following that review process is we brought a report to council with a recommendation on where the funding should be allocated. So I think what was being proposed here in terms of staff review and report to council is exactly in line with the process that we follow through the RFP and that all other agencies um, were subject to. Um, and typically when I believe funding is allocated, there is usually a report that would come to council with some form of information from staff uh, to, um, to address the, uh, the amount of money that's being requested. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Deputy Mayor, will you take the chair? I will, and I recognize you. Thank you. I'm going to... I'm going to encourage council to vote against this amendment for the exact reason that we just heard from uh, Commissioner Hurdle. And that is that the whole idea of subjecting to staff review and reporting to council is exactly what we do with every other shelter. We're essentially trying to catch up from the decision we made at budget, which I was not in favor of, but supported tonight based on the principle that that was the decision the council made. So I think that the best way to fix that to bring them in line with how we would, as close as we can to how we would treat every other shelter, is to subject them to that same review process. It's not in any way meant to be an, a negative or, or a slant against Don House, but simply to say that, again, if the key issue here is fairness and treating everybody the same, this is as close as we can get. So I am going to ask Council to vote against this amendment so that we can have that review and ultimately council makes the final decision on this anyways so it's not as though staff would have an ability to somehow change the outcome of what council has already decided we're simply asking for that information and we've heard from the delegation tonight that that information is coming forward I think it's only fair to treat them the same way thank you deputy mayor may I have the chair back yes you may my apologies thank you next on my list is Councillor Shell. thank you mayor Patterson um, I also will not be supporting this amendment um, for a couple of reasons. One, we do need that part that says staff review and report to council. And the um, direction, so as to facilitate options to keep Don House open, sort of um, start staff in a direction that really hasn't been part of the entire process. It's starting to do things in an ad hoc way that I'm very uncomfortable with because we do have probably... 10 or more shelters that have been dealing with the city of Kingston for the past couple of years as we've changed, start to change the way we do things. And I also note that the um, motion calls for staff to give us um, the information on the 10-year housing and homelessness plan, goals and objectives, and the request for proposal process. And I think we really need to see that. We need to see it as a council so that we can understand how we got to the point that we did, that Don House uh, had its funding changed, so that we get a perspective on this instead of doing it um, in an ad hoc manner. We're doing it uh, for now, but I, I don't want to continue to direct staff uh, in a direction that really isn't compatible with what we've been doing for the past couple of years, especially since staff to our council hasn't seen the whole plan and understands the context. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor George. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you for those words, Councillor Shaw. It was well put. Um, yeah, I find this extremely bizarre. I mean, coming from a council who claims to be an economist, um, we're dealing with taxpayers' dollars. Um, we are responsible for those. Um, the right place to make that decision is not with external agencies, but with in-house right here. So. Um, I definitely not, will not be supporting this. I think this is one of the most bizarre things I've seen in a long time. 
Um, when we're talking that kind of money, that is something that our staff, they need to be reporting out to us. And uh, so I'm going to continue to support the original wording in the motion. I, I think this is totally out of line. Thank you. Anyone else on the amendment? Councillor McLaren, you can speak last. Councillor Stroud. This will be quick. Um, I actually agree with pretty much what everyone's been saying on both sides of this amendment, but uh, I'm going to support the amendment because my understanding is that staff will, everything that we do is, is direction to staff, and, and this financial and operational plan that we're, we know we will be getting from Don House will be seen by staff. So I thought it redundant to put in a subject to staff review in, into the actual motion, and that's why I support the amendment to, to change the wording. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Candon. Uh, I just want to point out, I've... It's a So this is on the motion to amend? Yeah. I just want to clarify, again, as I, as I put forward, it's about um, accountability, transparency, and, and holding all nonprofits at the same bar, uh, not having to make some jump through some hoops and, and not others. Um, Commissioner Hurdle made it very clear that uh, that's standard procedure. And the only thing, the only reason I put this forward is, uh, is essentially to uh, gain credibility in the sense that we treat all nonprofits fairly. Um, it's very clear that uh, the original motion uh, may, does not need to be amended as a result of that. And uh, for that reason, I, uh, I will not be supporting the amendment. Thank you. Councilor McLaren, you can speak last. Thank you. I'd just like to draw your attention that we are creating a funding loophole here. The original motion called for um, a report to be returned to Council in the third quarter, but funding runs out in June, and there will be a few months there in which there will be no funding, in which we could be destroying Dawn House if the report takes too long, and that's part of the reason that we wanted to move this the way I had, because if we leave, if we don't do that, there's a possibility that the report could be delayed beyond the funding envelope or window that they have. They're forced to close, and then it becomes more expensive or impossible to open up again. And in the meantime, we'll have several vulnerable women and their children on the street. So in order to close that gap, that funding gap between the end of June and the third quarter, I, suspect, I suggest that we actually pass this, please. Thank you. Thank you. So we will call the question on the motion to amend. Please vote. And that loses two to 10. Councilor McLaren, you still have the floor do you wish to speak to the motion as uh, not amended? You have, you have four minutes left on the clock if okay. there's anything else you want to say. Great. So as I said earlier, I still support this. I would like to see transparency, accountability, and uh, I hope that we are moving Don House to fit in with our housing and homelessness plan. They had mentioned that they are dealing with the hardest cases of homeless people of women, and as such, they are a worthy charity to support, a worthy shelter. And I hope that we can actually keep them open and that we have not accidentally set up trap for them uh, or delivered them to the wolves by uh, this funding gap that may have appeared. And I encourage you all to actually support this because I believe that it will be done and I hope that staff will uh, help them to find a way to continue on as we had originally voted in the budget session. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak to the motion as amended with the first amendment? So just with that new dollar figure? Seeing none, Councillor Cannon, you have the right to speak last if you'd like, or we can call the vote. Okay. So please vote the motion as amended.
and that carries. Uh, for the next motion, uh, Deputy Mayor, I'll ask if you would take the chair. I will, and I recognize you. Moved by Mayor Patterson, seconded by Councillor Bohm. Whereas members of council will be asked to, at the upcoming strategic planning session to establish priorities for future capital projects, and whereas information regarding the financial parameters of potential future capital projects is important to have in advance in order to assist in establishing these priorities. And whereas at the 2015 budget sessions, council received the 15 year capital expenditure forecast. Therefore be it resolved that the CAO be requested to bring forward an information report to the March 3rd, 2015 council meeting with information about the short and longer term financial parameters of projects currently forecasted in the 15 year capital plan, including the airport expansion project, the third crossing, the Wellington Street extension, north and south segments, and other infrastructure projects. And I return the chair to you and you have five minutes. Actually, I, I think I'll, I'll, ask you to keep, I'll ask you to keep the chair and you can time me and I'll make sure that I am I will do so. well under five minutes. Thank you. Um, just, just a couple of brief comments. I just want to make it clear to everyone that this motion is not in any way uh, suggesting what projects we should prioritize. That's going to be something that council is going to need to decide in our strategic planning sessions at the end of March. This is simply to ask staff for information related to projects that have been in discussion in the past. These are, these are projects that may or may not be supported, may or may not be prioritized, but I think it's important to make that decision one way or the other, that we need to know exactly what the ballpark figures are. What dollar figures are we looking at with some of the infrastructure projects that have already been put forward? This also doesn't preclude other projects uh, from coming forward as well, but I think at the end of the day, if we're gonna prioritize properly, we need to know exactly what the dollar figures are that are gonna be attached to all of these things. So if we can have that information uh, at our March 3rd meeting, then that's gonna prepare us, I think, to, to go in and to make an educated decision about what we will and will not prioritize as a council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Yes, Councillor Stroud. I have a question for staff. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Neal. Um, if uh, for some strange reason this motion does not pass, what would, uh, just for my own uh, understanding of the process, what would the CAO and, and senior staff be reporting before we get into strategic uh, planning? Like, like what, how does this specify, how does this change the course of of the reports. Yes, I recognize staff. Through you, um, Deputy Mayor. It was intended all along that, uh, I think a date was set for mid-February. I think it was February the 18th, if I recall where um, we were gonna have a session with council to discuss a process and to discuss some of these items. Uh, a report from CAO Hunt would preclude having that meeting, not having to have that meeting and would better prepare council for its upcoming strategic priority sessions in, at the end of March. So we can do it. Uh, this was discussed with CAO Hunt and uh, I think it will set some context for this council. Thank so, you, Commissioner Leger. Okay, so my understanding is then this is really just a kind of a different uh, method of, of providing the information that we need to make our strategic uh, planning sessions. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you have unanimous support and I pass the uh, chair back to you. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Uh, so we have no other motions. Uh, do we have any notices of motion tonight? I'm seeing none. Uh, minutes? 
Moved by Councilor Turner, second by Councilor Bohm, that the minutes of City Council meeting number 2015 5, held Tuesday, January 27th, 2015, be confirmed. So please vote. And that carries. Uh, tabling of documents, we have a number of communications that are noted. Is there any other business? Councilor or Deputy Mayor Neal. Just very quickly, I know that, and I, I think I've heard a partial answer to the, the question I'm about to ask, but I did send uh, uh, CAO Hunta an email. I was curious about the reduction in our strategic planning uh, sessions. I think anybody from our previous council would say that in 2011 that was a, an excellent opportunity to kind of anchor our policies over the, the next four years. And, and I was a little concerned when I first saw a reduction in, in those meetings uh, because they give everybody on council, particularly new councillors, an opportunity to, to f be fully engaged in setting priorities. Um, Commissioner Leger, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to indicate that um, I think by providing the information and in CEO Hunt's report on March 3rd, what that'll do is it'll better position you and you'll have more time actually at the end of March in your three days to, uh, to undertake your strategic, pri strategic priority setting sessions. Thank you, and I'll hold you to that. Thank you very much. I just, uh, just in wanted to add also that there will be a third session that will be added after the March 30th, March 31st dates that will be later on in April. So it is actually going to follow quite closely uh, the process that we had four years ago. I appreciate that, thank you. Okay, so with that, I will ask for bylaws. Your Worship, we're going to be separating a number of bylaws this evening, so you'll see people going up and down, so uh, Mr. Arjun will manage that process. So the first set of bylaws are for uh, the conflict that Councillor uh, Bohm uh, declared for the uh, UK bylaws for the budget. So moved by Councillor Candon, second by Councillor Turner. Uh, two, uh, two, three, and four be given their first and second reading. Please vote. That carries. So let's move by Councillor Stroud, second by Councillor Osanek. The clause. 11.34 of bylaw 2010-1 be suspended for the purpose of giving bylaws 2, 3, and 4, 3 readings. So it's moved by Councillor Shell, second by Councillor George. The bylaws two, three, and four be given their third reading. Please vote. And that carries. So now we'll do the sixth bylaw, which is the uh, municipal um, operating by budget bylaw. So Councillors Holland and Bohm have uh, declared Pecuniaries to this bylaw. So it's moved by Councillor Cannon, second by Councillor Turner, that bylaw six be given its first and second reading. Please vote. carries. 
Moved by Councillor Stroud, second by Councillor Osanic, that, that Clause 11.34 of Bylaw 2010-1 be suspended for the purpose of getting Bylaw 6. Three readings. Please vote. That carries. That bylaw, that's moved by Councillor Shell, seconded by Councillor George, that bylaw six be given its third reading. They called you in, they called you in one motion too early. Please vote. So two people to vote. That carries. So it's moved by Councillor Candon, second by Councillor Turner, the bylaws one, five, seven to nine be given their first and second reading. Please vote. That carries. Moved by Councillor Stroud, second by Councillor Osanic, that Clause 11.34 of Bylaw Number 2010-1 be suspended for the purpose of giving Bylaw 5. Reading what? Yeah, 5, 3 readings. Please vote. Still one person to vote. That carries. Let's move back. Moves to my Councilor Shell, say my Councilor George, that pilots one, five, seven, three, nine be given their third reading. Please vote. That carries. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Neal, second by Councillor Allen. Please vote. That carries. Thank you. We are adjourned.